Proverbs chapter number three, and we're going to start a series tonight on principles to live by. I don't know if I've ever been as excited about a series as I am this one. Um, I, I really am thoroughly excited about this series, and um, I was telling my wife about it. I, I just, just a, lot of, a lot of the topics I'll be covering um, are truly life-changing topics that if we learned this thing called principle, that would help us in life. I was taught this several years ago by my pastor, and I applied it to my life. I'm telling you, um, it can help you if we learn from it. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 1, the scripture says, My son, forget not my what? Law, but let thine what? Heart keep my what? Commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they what? add to thee. Father, take these next few minutes. As tonight we teach on what is principle, we learn what it's all about as we start the series. Lord, I, I, I wish everybody was here tonight. I wish the whole church was here. But Lord, they're not. But these who are here, I believe that they grab this truth, just the truth tonight. If we learn this tonight, I think it'll whet our appetite for the rest of the series throughout the year as we go forward with this. I pray to anoint me, Holy Spirit. Let me help your people, please. In Jesus' name, amen. The power of decisions are life impacting. Understand that statement right there. Um, sadly, I watch people make um, decisions flippantly, and only to beat them up later in life. Um, several times, you know, now as a pastor, my job, you know, people don't listen. Then they come to my office and say, preacher, can you help me put everything back together? Yeah, I'll try. I wish you'd listen before, but I'll try now. And I'm not, I, and, and trust me, don't ever think, don't ever think that I won't help you. I will help you. Um, now I don't want you to come to the office and, and waste my time and yours with your mind already made up. But if you truly want help, I will absolutely help anybody that comes in and says, preacher, I need some help in this area and I'll do my best. I'll give you the, um, I'll give you scriptural principle on what to do, but I watch, I watch people in life in so many areas of life where people are flippant about these decisions. And I've say flippant, they just kind of go into it. Let me, I, okay. I have some things written down for instance, finances. Yeah. Um, people make financial decisions flippantly without ever getting help, without ever getting advice. I think it's good that everybody gets financial advice. Doesn't mean that somebody knows. And when I say advice, understand somebody needs to have veto power in your life. Somebody just needs to say, I just don't think that's a good idea. That's all. It's not that, it's not that they know more or less than you. It's just that sometimes we, we need to need somebody on the outside to look at it and say, what do you think? And, and they say, no, I don't think that'd be a good idea. I thank God a thousand times over. I've listened to people on these topics because and there's been times i have not just like everybody else have not listened to uh, people on these and it's always come back to bite me for instance on a job i think it's good that you that you ask and get some advice hey do you think this would be a good job do you think this would be a good job now of course i know i know i know why some people don't ever ask that reason because they know it's going to take them out of church and they already know what the preacher's going to say I mean, you already know it, but you're going to go ahead and do it anyway, and then you expect, then you wonder why your life goes downhill. It's because you're not following scriptural principles. For instance, I think it's good um, for young people to go to their pastor about um, college. Should I go to this college? Should I not go to this college? What should I do? I, I think it's important that you understand um, the the pros and cons about this. I think it's good to um, on on certain friendships. Hey, is this a good person for me? I don't think you need to come to me about every person you want to become friends with. But, you know, there are some people, maybe you have a little question. And that question right there should tell you, I need to go talk to somebody. I need to go talk to somebody. For instance, I think I think young, I think single people ought to, ought to get advice on dating and marriage. Amen. From the pastor. Right. Say why? Because the pastor cares for you. Amen. Listen to me on this topic right here. I've watched so many. And listen, I'm not saying I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to dictate who you marry. I, I don't believe in that. 
because you're the one that has to live with him. I don't. But I do want, what I would like is to have some veto power to say, I just don't think that'd be a good thing or delay power to say, let's wait on this. Does that make sense? Um, I, I, I thank God that I, in these, in this area, I, I was, I was smart enough to listen to somebody and say, yes, no, yes, no. I was, um, um, now, okay. The one time I didn't listen, I got engaged to somebody. And I was, I shouldn't have been engaged to them. Now that God broke that off because the way I pray, I'd ask God, God, if you don't want me to marry them, then you're going to have to end it. And God ended it in his own way. Now I'm just saying, I am saying this. Um, okay. Love is stupid. Right. Not blind, stupid. Okay. You get slapped with a stupid stick and you can't see it. That's why you need to get somebody on the outside. Listen, okay, the only one I really have, I, I have some skin in the game with as in family was my daughter. Right. She's the only one. But now I care for every one of you. And I, and I and okay, when I was president of the Bible college down in Texas, um, parents would say, how would you counsel my children about dating? I said, the same way I'd counsel my daughter. Because I'm not going to, listen, I, I'm just not one of those just, just going to say, okay, yeah, yeah, that's okay. If that's what you want. No, I, I'm going to give you, now, if you ask my opinion, don't, don't ask my opinion if you don't want it and my advice. But I'm telling you, I think it'd be wise to get some counseling. Okay. Even if you're going to, if let's say you're moving out of the area and another church, I think it's wise to get counsel about a church and understand. I just think that we, we flippantly make decisions about things and then we regret it later on. And, and why? Because because there's safety in the multitude of counselors. Now, there are some th- decisions are impacting decisions. Every decision is. I think of some, I think of decisions in the scriptures. For instance, let me tell you some decisions in the scriptures. Adam and Eve. Yeah. Who would have ever thought that eating some fruit would make such an impact on the world? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Now, you know what Eve should have done when that serpent, even though she did not know that was Satan that was talking to her, you know what she should have done? She should have said, well, let me talk to God about it. That's what she should have done. If she, or let me talk to my husband about it. Because I believe if she had talked to her husband, I think, I think Adam would have said, no, 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 we know better. We know better. God's already told us. And if they had talked to God, God, God would have said, no, you don't, you don't talk to that, that serpent right there. Did you get that? You shouldn't have a snake. That's just in the Bible somewhere. And, uh, but, but understand, understand, I, all I'm saying is they should have listened. They never thought. What they thought was an inconsequential decision decision was a major decision. And oftentimes what we figure are just a little decision, it really is a big decision. The reason why we don't see it as big is because we're looking at it from our viewpoint. Someone from the outside can see it a whole lot different. So I, I, so Adam, okay. I think of Amnon, Amnon made a mistake. What was that? One friend. One friend. He had one bad friend. Now, follow me now. The, Bible, the scriptures don't teach us how many good friends he had. I imagine Amnon had a lot of good friends. He just had one bad friend. And the one bad friend is what got him into trouble. And can I tell you, it's not all the good friends that you have is your problem. It's the one bad friend. Now, if Amnon would have got, would have gone to someone, I think someone would have said, "No, you don't need to run with him." Right. I think someone been, would have been smart enough. That's why. That's why, mom and dad, your children are, are not going to come to you about asking you, but you need to be the one. They're in your house, they're in, and you need to say, "No, you don't need to be friends with them." And I'm talking to 18. When they're an adult, you know, they've got to. At some point, they've got to start making their own decisions. But I am saying, um, when they're not an adult, mom and dad need to be able to say, no, that's not a good idea. That's not a good idea. My mom and dad were very observant about my friends, especially my mom. And she says, so, no, son, you're not going to, you're not going to, you're not going to play with him. But mom, she, she goes, don't, don't, but mom, me. No, she goes, um, you're going to do you something. You're not going to play with that guy. You got that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You know, now why? Cause my, my mama knew. Yeah. So, so we got to learn. David made a made one decision. He never thought that fighting Goliath would change his whole life. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Never thought it. Amen. 
But that one decision to fight Goliath changed his whole life that promoted him to king. I think of I think of Ruth. Ruth never thought that following her mother-in-law would put her in the lineage of Christ. Never. You know, you say, but that, that's not a real big thing. It, it, yes, it is a big thing. It's a big thing. It affects our it affects our salvation. Somebody help me out. Yeah. Now understand, I mean, so so Ruth made a she made one decision, and that decision was, I'm not leaving you. Right. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow you to the day I die. I'm not I'm not leaving this God. Now, what was that? It was the decision. I think of Judas Iscariot made one bad decision. Yeah. One bad decision. Right. He followed money. And sacrificed his eternity for money. He gained the whole world, but lost his what? Soul. Money's not everything. Moses chose to identify with God's people and not Israel. Gave up the throne. And get this now, and here's the amazing thing. For he didn't see the results of that decision for over 40 years. But that one decision gives us the Pentateuch, Genesis to Deuteronomy. It gives us the deliverance of Israel from Egypt because one man made a decision. I'm not, I was raised. He had every right to the throne. He was adopted into Pharaoh's family. He could have been, he could have sat on Pharaoh's throne, but he says, no, I'm not going to do that. He says, he says, I know who I am. I'm going to identify with God's people. Get this now. What was that? He made a right decision. Now, can I, I wanna, let me make several statements about decisions before we get into this thing called principle. Statement number one, every day you make decisions knowingly and unknowingly that affect your life. Every day you make decisions knowingly and unknowingly that affect your life. Now I want you, I want you to listen to me very carefully on this. I have to understand what well, I, I don't know which decision is the impactful decision. So I have to treat every decision as a critical decision. You with me so far? I don't know if hitting the snooze button this morning will will affect my day or not. Now, I didn't hit the snooze button. I think the snooze button hit me, but but uh, I'm sorry. No, it didn't. But anyway, um, but but yes, I, I didn't know. I, I don't know. You see what we don't we what we consider are uh, that's not a big decision. It is a big decision. Um, you know, I just just driving to just driving to the church every day. Yeah. Me driving to the church before I, when I get in my car, first prayer I pray before I back out of our garage is I say, God, which way would you want me to go to the church? Yeah, yeah. That's good. Of course, right now with construction, who knows? But anyway, and, um, you know, you just kind of go the way that construction's not going on. But anyway, you have to understand, which is no place. But anyway, and, uh, but you have to understand that, that I, I've got to understand that there, that I make so many decisions. We all do. You made a decision to come to church. You made a decision what to eat. You made a decision when to get out of bed. You made a decision which way to come to church. You made a decision what time to leave for church. You made a decision whether to read your Bible this morning. You made a decision whether to pray this morning. You made a decision what time of the day you're going to eat. You made a decision whether to talk to somebody. You made a decision whether to work hard or not work hard. You made a decision um, um, what to wear. You made a decision whether to take a bath or not. And I can tell you, some of but anyway, um, but, but I'm saying we all, we make, you understand, see, all of those decisions, we don't understand the power of every decision. So every day you make decisions knowingly and unknowingly that affect your life. Number two, every decision has risk. Every decision has risk. You say, how much risk? I don't know. Because I'm not God. I don't know the future. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I know this. Every decision I make has risk. Yeah. Yeah. And every decision has consequences. And I've got to understand every decision has, a, okay, every decision has the potential of blessings or consequences. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. So I've got to understand there's a risk in every decision. You know, we want to make decisions with no risk. You're never going to find that. 
Every decision has a risk. Okay, you choose to buy a house, you choose not to buy a house, there's risk. You choose to buy a car, you choose not to buy a car, there's risk. You choose to be a friend, choose not to be a friend, there's risk. You choose to go to church, you choose not to go to church, there's risk. You understand, you choose to move, you choose not to move, there's risk. You choose to take a job, you choose not to take that job, there's risk. There's risk in every decision that everybody makes. Which leads to the statement number three, every decision demands a decision. Every decision demands a decision. Understand, not, I want you to listen to the statement, not to make a decision is a decision. Right. Right. I don't want to make that decision. You just made that decision. Your decision was no. Because you didn't want to make that decision. Well, I don't want to say no. Well, no, but you said no. Right. Our, oh, I could say a lot of things on this one. Our, our society is so soft. Right. We don't like to tell somebody no. Right. So we let indecision be our out. And can I tell you, your indecision to be your out is not the right decision. If if I was just talking to men, I know I'm not, but if I was, I'd say, sir, man up and make a decision. You know, we, we have every decision demands a decision. The hardest thing about leading is you have to make decisions. And there's a risk at every decision. Which leads you to my next statement, statement number four. Just because decisions demand a decision doesn't mean that I must make the decision immediately. I'll say that again. Just because decisions demand a decision doesn't mean that I must make the decision immediately. Okay, someone says you got to make a decision now. No, I don't. Sometimes I just say I need to pray about it. Sometimes I say, I got to get count. Now I do both of those. I'll say, I got to get counsel. I got to pray. I got to do something. I, I, you know, because when I don't know when the indecision's there, so, so my decision, okay, when the indecision's there, the decision demands that I wait until I know what the right decision is. Right. Right. But I have to have a deadline to make that decision. Yep. Amen. Because the indecision not to make a decision is still just as detrimental as making no decision at all. I've got to make a decision. Now, go to our text verse, Proverbs chapter 3. He says, my son, forget not my law. I want you to circle the word law. Put this word right next to it, principle. 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 P-R-I-N-C-I-P-L-E, not P-A-L-P-L-E. Principles here in school. Principle is what we're talking about in making decisions. So he says, he says right here, he says, he says, my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart. I want you to circle the word heart and put right next to that feelings. Feelings. So he is saying in this verse, he says, let, he says, he says, let law principle, he says, he says, but let thine heart, notice that's feelings, keep my commandments. You can circle the word commandments and put principle again. Laws and commandments are principles. So what God is saying is this. God says, he says, okay, God says, don't let your feelings make decisions. Let your feelings run to principle to make decisions. You with me so far? He says, so your feelings, he says, take, so God, what God's saying is, take the feeling out by letting the principle make the decision. Because if I take the feelings out, get this now, and just let the principle make the decision, then I now have removed one element that is detrimental to to decisions. I often tell people, make your decision up here, not here. Right. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Amen. Amen. Up here, oh, right here, 
will tell you a lot of things. Up here will tell you a whole lot more. And there, and in every decision, there's a battle from up here to right here. Is there not? Yeah. This wants something. This says no, or this says yes, and this one says no. Yeah. You say am I schizophrenic? I don't know. <laughs> Let me ask me out of me. But anyway, but you have to understand. I, I've, I've got, I can't. I've got to take this out. Listen to me. Too many people in this church are letting this make your decisions. That's why you stay out of church when you don't feel like it. Feelings. You've got to understand, I've got to let principle make my decision. Now, why? Why do I let principle? Look at verse 2. For length of days. Okay, so when I let principle make my decision, it adds time to my day. I get more accomplished. Let let me explain why. One, because bad decisions always steal from your time. Second, when principle makes decision, principles already made the decision. So because principles already made the decision, get this now, it's not taking time. So now I've got more time to do what I need to do. Are you with me so far? Yeah. Nod your head, slap your neighbor, and look at me. Um, and, no, don't do that. Don't do that, Uncle Mike. But anyway, and, uh, but, but hold on a second now. So I've got to understand, okay, it adds time to my day. Something else it does. It says, he says, for length of days and long life. Now, what does that mean? It gives you a quality of life. It gives adds to your life, okay? In the scriptures, God talks about full of days and full of years. I want my life to be full of years, not just full of days. I want my life to be packed with great decisions. I don't want to just have a few days here and there that just have a few good decisions. You with me so far? And so God says it adds to your life. Why? Okay, right living always adds to life. Does it not? Principle says going 120 miles an hour down the highway is not smart. Now understand, you've got, we've got to understand that, okay, God says, if you stop letting this make the decision, let this make the, the principle of God's word, let it make the decision for you. He says it adds time to your day. It adds to your life. Then he says, he says right here, he says, and, he says, and peace shall they add to you. What's that mean? He says, bad decision. God's saying this, you let heart make decision. You'll live a life of turmoil. You be in and out. Okay, so, okay. You know why psychiatrists are making their money? Because people are letting the heart make the decision. And they live a life of turmoil. And they're trying to get the, the, the um, psychiatrist to stop the turmoil. Well, the turmoil will stop if you will simply say, I'm going to live by principle. Now, what is principle? Let's go down that list right there. What is principle? Here's the definition of principle. Number one, a fundamental truth that serves as the foundation for a system of belief, behavior, decisions, or for a chain of reasoning. Let me say that again. A foundation, a fundamental truth that serves as the foundation for a system of belief, behavior, decisions, or for a chain of reasoning. Follow me very carefully. So I use principle to establish my found. Okay, principle is established foundational beliefs. Yeah. So I want you to understand something. So I, uh, okay, so I make, I set principles before the pressure's on me. You with me so far? That's why you read your Bible every day. That's why you go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. You say this, that, 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 I I don't need Sunday night sermon. No, you're missing a truth that you're going to need somewhere down the road. I preached a sermon this last Sunday night, and I wish people were here, but but they missed it. I'm I'm quitting. Listen to me. Why? Because it it could help them down the road because we're all going to be faced with it. Amen. Understand I, that one thing that I'm missing. Get this now. I, I, I've, I'm, I'm learning principle every time I hear a truth from God's word. I'm learning principle. Maybe not for today, but somewhere down the road. God, okay. God's allowing me to hear it because He knows I'm going to face it. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. Come on. 
And so I make that decision. That's why I tell, okay, this is why I say come to the altar and make a decision, not in your seat. You come to the altar because it's a movement that you're leaving your seat, coming to an altar, and you're setting a principle that you heard in the preaching time. Does that make sense to you? I'm not trying to get people to come down here because I, 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 it makes me feel good or not. I know whether I've preached right or not. If one person responds or nobody responds, that doesn't affect whether I know what I preach. I'm trying to get people to move. And, 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 and I'm just going to be, I'm going to be a little transparent here, and I, I'm not mad at anybody, but there's like a wall from three quarters of the way auditorium back that people don't want to come up here. Oh, and I don't understand that. Yeah. Amen. This altar is for everybody. Amen. And you check the churches that don't use the altar, they eventually go liberal. The altar has to be an important place in our life because we set so many principles at this altar. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to the altar. God, okay, from this point forward, I'm going to do this. I'm setting this principle. You know what I'm doing? I'm setting a foundational truth so that way somewhere down the road, get this now, I don't ever have to make this decision again because the pressure's not on me right now. So I make the decision at the altar. I seal it at the altar. That's right. Amen. That's good. So I, I so a principle allows me to set that belief, that behavior, that decision, that reasoning before the time of pressures on me. Number two, principle is truth. Yes, sir. Right. Amen. Yes. Okay. Truth. Help me out if you know the end of this one. Truth never what changes. Never. Our society wants to say that truth is relative. If truth was relative, then truth would not be truth. That's why, that's why I laugh at the CDC. Well, science is relative. No, it's not. Science is not relative. Because it, well, we, now we may learn more about science, but science is not relative. It cannot be. Why? Because God set the laws of science before um, at, the, at the creation time. You don't believe me? Talk to brother. Talk to brother Williams. He could he could teach you a lot about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Problem with our society is we don't believe that truth is an absolute. We believe it's relative to the culture of our day. And the reason why is because we want truth to fit our lifestyle. Truth doesn't always fit our lifestyle. That's why America's in the shape that she's in. I've got to understand principle is truth. That's why I set my principles before I'm faced with that decision. Yeah. 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 When I'm faced with the pressure of something that's going to keep me out of church, no, I don't do that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Why? Principle. I, I don't. I don't. I don't even have to think about it. My principle tells me. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. Number three. Principle lives on purpose and not for position or gain. Principle lives on purpose and not for position or gain. So follow me now. So if principle never changes, follow me now. So because it's truth. And I make it, I, I, I decide on this because I've said it according to this book. You with me so far? Right. Is there not safety in principle? Yeah. Yeah. So, so get this now. So, it, so because of that, once I allow a principle, I start making decisions by principle, follow me very carefully, then it doesn't matter who I'm talking to. Right. Yeah. Personality is now, I take personality out. I let principle make that decision. Okay. And we've all been in schools where, where, where personality does matter. Right. Yeah. We've all been there. Right. We've been in, we've been in church where personalities do matter. I, I try, I try not to do that here. I don't know if I always succeed, but I try not to. Right. You don't believe me. Ask my wife and daughter if I always agree with them. I'm serious. Just ask them. Yeah. I'm about as hard headed as this foundation. I, I don't do things just to appease my wife and my daughter. They both know that. Right. When I make my decision by principle, buddy, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Now, if it hair lips the devil, it hair lips the devil, but that's what we're going to do. Right. Listen to me, somewhere we've got to understand that's what that, so, but that's what principle does. You see, there's, the, I don't, I don't allow personality to make my decisions. Yeah. 
I let principle make my decision. I don't live for position I, I, because you'll change. If you live for gain, you'll change. If you live for principle, you will not change. Okay. I think one of the mistakes we're making in Washington, D.C., they think they have to make laws. We've got enough laws. Let's just enforce them. Yeah. Now, there needs to be some laws. Just get off the books. Yeah. We don't need to make new laws. Right. Just, you know, they think because they're up there, we got to make laws. No, you don't. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because what they're doing is meddling. That's why they believe that truth is relative. Yeah. That's why most of the Supreme Court ought to be impeached because they're letting society dictate their decisions instead of the truth, the principle of the, of the United States Constitution. Next number. I, I could go a long ways on that, but I won't. Principle allows you to make fewer decisions. Principle allows you to make fewer decisions. So follow me now. When I start saying I've got to let my principles make my decisions, so they're already made, are they not? Yeah. So guess what that does? That lessens the amount of decisions I have to make. Yeah. Now let me ask you a question. The fewer decisions I make, the, the less chance I have of making a bad decision. Right? Yes or no? Yeah. yeah. So that's why I let principle make my decision. Um, I, I often tell people what I do for one, I must do for all. What's that? Principle. Yeah. I worked for someone that didn't like that statement. They said, I don't agree with that. Well, that's fine. But, 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 but I'm telling you, you, you live that, if you don't let that dictate you, you're going to be in a mess. Amen. Amen. Understand, you've, we've got to treat, everything has to be the same across the board. Right. So because principle allows you to make few decisions. Number five, principle takes the risk out of the decisions. Now, I didn't say this. I didn't say that it didn't take the hurt out of the decision. It takes the risk out. You say, why? Because the, okay, principle, okay. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego made a principled decision. Did it, did it benefit them? No. Did it hurt them? Yes. Was it the right decision? Absolutely. Stephen made a principled decision. Was it, did it benefit him? No. Was it a right decision? Yes. Why? It was a principled decision. Now, principle says I may get, okay, I may be hurt by the decision, but that's not the point. The point is, this is the right decision. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's good. Number six, living by principle doesn't mean that I won't have adverse circumstances happen. We just talked about this. Daniel made a principal decision. They made a law. Principal says, I've been praying for three times a day, and I'm not changing just because there's a law. Yeah. That's why when COVID came, I didn't have to think about if we're having church. I was just determining how we're going to have it on the property. Because yeah. I made the principle a long time ago that you can't be in one place and be in a hundred different places. I know this is, I know this is brilliant, but, um, but, but, but listen to me, that's why, okay, this, I have, okay, this, that's why I'm against virtual church. Yeah. Right. I met someone on, on Monday night, Monday night. He says, do you do virtual church? Someone led to Christ. No, I don't. His dad says, you're old school. Yeah. I said, as old school as the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. One place. I'm not, every other, I'm just talking about Maranatha Baptist Church now. That's why we, I, I don't ever plan on going on, on YouTube um, on, with lives. I don't ever plan on doing live services. Right. Why? One place. Amen. One place. Amen. That's a principle. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, um, number, seven, number seven. Principle takes feeling out of your decisions. So, how do I get my how do I get my feelings out? I gotta go, but I gotta go to principle, right. which leads to number eight. Principle takes personalities out of your decision. Can I put it this way? I like to put it this way. Principle makes you personality blind. Is anybody here colorblind? Anybody here colorblind? 
don't know if we have any color blind. Are you color, you're color blind? That's all you see? Oh, you don't see red or green. I was going to say, am I red or am I green? Which one am I? But anyway, <laughs> I was trying to figure that one out. Okay, but, but there are people that are colorblind. He can't see red or green. That's detrimental when he's driving down the road. But anyway, <laughs> don't get in front of him. But anyway, <laughs> but, I'm sorry. <laughs> and so, so understand, understand, okay, when you're making a principal decision, it's like someone who's colorblind. If all they see is black and white. Everything's, there's no color there. A principal decision doesn't see personality, doesn't see personality. I think the best way to make decisions in a school is that the situation is brought to, the, to those making the decisions without the name. Yeah, right, right. You with me so far? That way you can look at that circumstance and say yes, no. Yes, no. Now, I, I want us to understand. Um, so, somebody help me out in the back here. Um, so, understand that we have to, we have to look at, I, I, my principal has to make my decision. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't, I, I've, I've got to take personality totally out. It's hard to do. Yeah. Number nine, print, um, principle takes personal desires out of your decisions. Amen. You know what your desires ought to be? Truth. Yes. Right. Amen. Truth. Yeah. Yes, Truth. Not always easy. Right. I've got to get my, des my desires out. My desire is to have Brahms ice cream every night. Amen. Amen. Principle says you'll be as big as the blimp if you do that. Somebody help me out. Does anybody want to testify? But anyway, yeah. Now, um, understand, so I've got to take personal desires out. Yeah. Got to. Got to. Because, because my desires are feelings. Right. We all have personal desires. Yeah. Amen. Which leads me to number 10. Principle looks at the past to determine the present. Principle looks at the past to determine the present. Okay, so follow me now. So what am I doing when I make a principal decision? I look at what this decision did in the past. I was just talking to the teenagers about, about, um, about the importance of, of learning and, and hearing and, and listening. And I said, listen, you, you, if we throw history out, we, we lose the lessons of history. Yeah. History has good and history has bad. But if we whitewash history and say we're not going to talk about it, how are we going to learn the lessons from them? This is crazy. Understand, I'm not saying that what they did in the past was always right, but I'm not going to throw. I, I was watching a little bit. Um, this this week is the is the week of the Masters um, in golf, and it was interesting. They had an interview of um, uh, Jack Jack Nicklaus, and my wife and I were just watching the interview with him. I said, you know, it's interesting. He's an older man right now. Isn't it interesting? The world lifts up their heroes, but Christians cast stones at their heroes. That's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Right. Right. Was Jack Nicholas perfect? Absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah. But we throw our we throw those who've done great things in the past under the bus because we've listened, we've let YouTube preachers dictate th try to try to whitewash history. Yeah. Yeah. Now I let history be my teacher. Right. I'm smart enough to know that I'm too dumb to know what history uh, that without history I can't learn. Yeah. So I let history become a teacher for me. Right, right. Yeah, man. Okay. Part of my job of, of, of pastor is I go behind a door and see what happened behind that door. What was the decision made behind that door? Then I come behind this pope and say that decision, this, this door over here, behind this door is bad decisions. Right. I go over to this door over here and I, I look behind this, see all the decisions that were made behind this door and I see good decisions made over here. And I come back in the pulpit and say, ladies and gentlemen, you go through that door, you don't go through that door. This door is going to hurt you. This door is going to lead to blessings. That's all I do as a preacher. Right. And that's why when I get over here and I see the heartache and the sorrow that's behind that door, that's why your pastor gets a little passionate when he stands up and preaches and say, listen, we can't go behind that door over there. There's heartache over there. Young person, listen.
it to me. Now you got to go to this door over here. This is the door that leads to joy. This is the joy that leads to blessing. This is the joy that will help you grow old and enjoy life. You go over here. You'll live a hard life. You'll live in bondage to sin. Oh, that's all we do. I just go to history. Let history teach me what to do and what not to do. That's why preachers that want that don't want anything to do with history and just want to take what where they are right now are headed down a bad road. Bad road. Which leads me to number eleven. Principle looks to the future and not the present. I want you to write that down. Don't close everything up. Just look at me a second. Principle looks to the future and not the present. Okay. You say, what do you mean by that, preacher? So I look at this principle, tells me, where will this decision go in the future? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. It's not what it is right now. Where will it go in the future? Right. Let, me, let, me, let me give you a couple of illustrations. Okay. Um, for a long, when I first pastored, all we had up here was banners. Everybody, I had a lot of people say, why don't you just get some screens up there? And I, 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 I'm still not a screen guy. I don't like screens. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not fond of them. But understand, this is a long auditorium. That's just about the only way those in the back can even see what's up here. I get it. But I made the decision. I want you to follow me now. I made the decision. Those screens will stay static in church service. I'm not putting notes up there. I'm not, I'm not going to have a camera watching me move around. Yeah. Amen. Because in the future, that could go down a wrong road. Amen. I'm not looking for a Wizard of Oz church where there's a screen up there and I don't know who's behind the screen. So I, is there anything wrong with putting notes up there? Absolutely not. But the problem is, is where does it go in the future? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Illustration. That's why I don't. That's why I don't put the songs up here. You say why? Because there's something about that songbook. One, if I put songs up here and take the songbooks away, I ruin our future music program. Ruin it. You say how? Okay. Anybody knows when that black dot goes up, you're supposed to raise your voice. They may not know how much. Amen, brother Shank. And when it goes down, that means you go low. We know that. We may not know how, um, what tone, but we know it goes up and down. And, it, it, and people learn to sing just by looking at it. Right. You, if all you have is words up here, we never learn how to sing parts. Yeah. And God, get this now, and God is big on parts because there's harmony. That God gives us the soprano, the alto, the lead, the baritone, the bass. God gives us all of that, and it's good. It's, it's what creates harmony. Harmony equates with who? The Holy Spirit of God. Amen. So my purpose, get this now, of, of just keeping the static is, I, okay, is there anything wrong with it? No, but it's where it takes us. Amen. 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 Go ahead. I, I, I could go down this road for a long time. But I know sometimes, sometimes people think, Preacher, this is a different age. Yes, but it's where it takes us. Yeah, right. That's right. Amen. 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 Okay. Might as well we're sinking the ship, so we might as well sink it some more. That's why I think we ought to have dress standards in a church. Because if we don't, then where will we be in 20 years? Yeah, I, I understand this is Wednesday night. Some people came, like Brother Ahmad, came straight from work. At least he says he did. I think he slept in all day. But anyway, came straight from work. But I think, I think you ought to wear your best to church. Your best to church. Whatever your best is, wear it to church. I believe that. Now, understand, I, I, there, there's principles about these things. Summertime's coming up. I don't think guys ought to wear shorts to church. This church. This is not a country club. This is church. Amen. 
we want to have a country club, let's go have a country club. But this is church. That's why I think the young girl, young ladies ought to, ought to, ought to wear a dress that is modest. We're not here to, we're not, listen to me, we're not here to show off our bodies. Now, why? Because if we start changing, where are we going to go? You see, change is a position. Change is a decision. And at some point, you've got to say, no, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. What is that? It's called principle. Yes. Amen. Called principle. Right. Okay. And, and don't take this wrong. I know a lot of churches have an orchestra. I'm not against orchestras and churches, but I, I don't ever plan on having one. Amen. You say, why? Because I don't know where that orchestra is going to go. Right. Right. Amen. I don't. Yeah. Right. Amen. One, I don't want high church music. I just want good, good evangelistic music. Amen. But Brother Trimble and I, when we were looking for the PA systems, um, we, we were, we looked, they, they gave us a church to go look at here in town. They had this guy in, inside of a box. He had drums up there. I don't think they're singing Amazing Grace the same way we sing Amazing Grace. Now, again, if another pastor wants that's his business. I just look at where it takes us tomorrow. Does that make sense to you? And if one day when I'm gone... If the next guy takes the next step, it won't be sinful. With me so far? So I'm trying to keep the next generation safe. And I let principle make that decision. I take the feelings out. Well, but every church does that. Not Maranatha Baptist Church. So I've got to say, where does this decision take me tomorrow? Principle says, okay, it may be, it, it may not be bad today, but where will they take it tomorrow? Right. Yeah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if we could learn to live by principle at this church, and, and, and for the next many weeks, I'll deal with different areas of principle that we need to make. I beg you, I beg you, don't miss a Wednesday night. Because if I can get my principles set, then I take a lot of my decisions out. And I just look at my principle and say, yep, I already decided. Here it is. I already decided. Here it is, Father. I thank you for the truth of principles, Lord. And I'm glad that somebody taught that to me a long time ago. And Lord, if we all just learned the importance of this thing called principle, I think it would save us a lot of heartache. But our sad part is a lot of times we let our heart make the decision instead of the law, the commandment, the principle. And Father, I'm asking that you'd allow us, please, to be wise enough to listen to your word as it teaches the importance of making decision by principles. Heads about Isaac.